Hi, and welcome to this training module. In this section, I will introduce you to the EFM32 and some of the features that makes these the world's most energy-friendly microcontrollers. The EFM32 microcontrollers are designed with energy efficiency as the main goal. But even so, the EFM32 devices provide a variety of peripherals and functionality to fit a wide range of standard applications and custom use cases. These unique features, coupled with the industry standard ARM Cortex-M processors, makes the EFM32 a simple choice for energy sensitive applications. To give you an idea of how the EFM32 can help save energy in your application, we have compiled a list of the top 10 factors that make the EFM32 the world's most energy friendly microcontroller. Now you might be wondering why we at Energy Micro are focusing on lowering energy consumption, whereas many other microcontroller vendors talk about low and ultra low power. Well, the fact is that when you're powering your application from a battery, you have a finite amount of energy to spend before the battery is depleted. If we look at a typical microcontroller application, the energy is spent in a mix of sleep and active modes. By reducing the power in these modes, we can save some of the energy consumed, but it's also important to remember that you can save a lot of energy by reducing the time you spend in active mode. This is why we at Energy Micro have looked at both the power and the time factor to reduce the total area under the curve and make your batteries last longer. The first factor in reducing the EFM32 energy consumption is reducing the power consumption in active mode. When powered from a 3 volt battery, the EFM32 consumes as little as 150 microamps per, per megahertz when running code from flash. Remembering that energy equals power times time, the full 32-bit processing power of the ARM Cortex processor is vital to finishing tasks faster and thereby also saving energy. The Cortex-M3 scores 1.25 drystone MIPS per megahertz and 2.17 core mark per megahertz, outpacing other processors, especially 8 and 16-bit devices, which typically takes four times as long to compute the same task. When a microcontroller wakes up from sleep mode to active mode, there is always a period of time where the device needs to wait for the power management system and oscillators to stabilize before it can start to run code. Reducing the wake-up time can both help meet real-time demands, as well as minimizing energy consumption during wake-up. The EFM32 can go from its sub-microamp sleep modes to full run mode in less than 2 microseconds. As a battery-operated microcontroller application usually spends most of its time in the sleep mode, it is vital to lower the power consumed in these modes as much as possible. The EFM32 consumes as little as 20 nanoamps in its lowest sleep mode, and it can also operate with just 900 nanoamp with full retention, power supervision, and with a real time counter running. Even with a highly efficient CPU, we really want to use it as little as possible. This is why we have designed all of our peripherals to operate autonomously without the help of the CPU. One important piece to achieve this is the DMA controller which can perform even advanced memory transfers while the device is asleep. The peripherals themselves also include advanced logic which enable them to make decisions on their own without waking up the CPU. Just like the reflexes in your body allows different body parts to communicate without involving the brain, the peripheral reflex system allows your peripherals to communicate with each other without involving the CPU. This allows the peripherals to cooperate with predictable timing even in deep sleep modes to perform tasks that one peripheral cannot handle alone. Timers can, for instance, send timing signals through the reflex system to other peripherals, triggering ADC or DAC conversions without any help from the CPU. The configurable channels of the peripheral reflex system allows the designers to combine the peripherals in a variety of different ways, solving tasks that are often not possible with regular microcontrollers. The seventh energy saving factor is the energy modes in the EFM32. These are numbered 0 to 4, with 4 being the lowest mode, shutoff mode. Energy mode 0 or run mode allows CPU processing from flash while consuming as little as 150 microamps per megahertz. In energy mode 1 or sleep mode, the CPU is asleep, but the rest of the peripherals and memory system are still available, consuming as little as 45 microamps per megahertz. 
In energy mode 2 or deep sleep mode, the higher frequency oscillators are switched off, but there is still a wide range of peripherals that can operate. With the real-time counter running, full power supervision and full retention, the EFM32 consumes only 900 nanoamps. In energy mode 3, the low frequency oscillators are also disabled, which is why it is called stop mode. Still, the EFM32 consumes only 590 nanoamps, while keeping full RAM and register retention, power supervision, and with a wake-up time of only 2 microseconds. In energy mode 4, or shut-off mode, the device consumes as little as 20 nanoamps. With some EFM32s you can even run a real-time counter and keep 512 bytes of memory retained at only 400 nanoamps. In many systems, the peripherals themselves can often be a large contributor to the overall energy consumption. This is why all the peripherals in the EFM32 are designed to be as energy efficient as possible. The ADC is a great example. It runs at 1 mega sample with full 12-bit resolution and consumes only 350 micrograms, including an internal reference. Another good example is the low energy UART. Traditionally, the MCU must be in a higher power state with a high frequency oscillator running to do UART communication. However, with the low energy UARTs, the EFM32 can perform full UART communication at up to 9600 volts per second, even in deep sleep mode, with a total consumption of only 1 microamp. The last example here is our LCD controller, which can directly drive up to 8 by 36 segment LCDs. This controller is extremely efficient, consuming only 550 nanoamp when driving a 4x40 matrix and can operate even in deep sleep. The LCD controller also includes contrast adjustment and an animation feature that allows you to run simple animations on up to 8 segments without ever leaving deep sleep. The ninth factor is something called the low energy sensor interface. Many microcontroller applications include several types of analog sensors that must be monitored. Examples of such could be thermistors, light sensors, capacitive touch buttons, or inductive sensors. In regular microcontrollers, the CPU needs to be awake to excite and read these sensors in a proper way, which requires the CPU to be activated regularly even if the sensors are not picking up any activity. These regular wake-ups, of course, waste a lot of energy. With a low-energy sensor interface, the EFM32 can monitor a wide range of analog sensor types without leaving deep sleep. This allows the EFM32 to consume just over 1 microamp while the sensors are in their idle state and only wake up the CPU when the sensors detect something of interest. Take for instance a capacitive touch application. Here the EFM32 would be in continuous deep sleep until a touch is detected and the CPU is woken up. The tenth and final factor of the EFM32 energy friendliness is something we call advanced energy monitoring. Even with an EFM32, it's possible to make software or external hardware that wastes a lot of energy. This is what we at Energy Micro call energy bugs. To help designers tackle these issues at an early stage of development, we have added an advanced energy monitoring system to our starter and development kits. This allows you to accurately measure the actual power consumption of the EFM32 and any other external components that you attach to the kit. The free Energy Aware Profiler tool allows you to see this measured power while your application is running. With the instrumentation trace of the EFM32, you can also pinpoint the exact C code that is running at any point along the power graph. To make it even easier for designers to use the EFM32 parts, we have created Simplicity Studio. This is a free program that contains all of Energy Micro's software tools, as well as documentation, software examples, and application notes. Simplicity Studio integrates directly with your favorite IDE and automatically checks for updates and makes sure that you have always the latest material at hand. To help designers evaluate and develop applications using the EFM32 devices, Energy Micro carries a wide range of starter and development kits. Starting at only $69, all kits include a full Sega J-Link debugger and advanced energy monitoring. This allows you to program, debug and measure power on the kits, or you can use them as a debugger and power measurement tool for your own prototypes. On the Leopard and Giant Gecko kits, we have included full onboard Sega J-Trace. 
This gives you cycle accurate instruction trace without additional debug hardware. EFM32 users also benefit from a large selection of software and hardware tools from third-party vendors. You can choose between a wide range of IDEs, including IR, Kyle, and even completely free GCC-based solutions. In addition to debug and production programming hardware, there is also a number of middleware vendors that have tailored their products to take full advantage of the EFM32 energy-saving features. The EFM32 product family consists of over 240 energy-friendly microcontrollers that come in a variety of packages. Memory options go all the way up to 1 MB of flash and 128 kilobytes of RAM, and with the CPU clock frequencies up to 48 MHz. The variants offer a choice between ARM Cortex-M0+, M3 or M4F CPU cores and options including USB and display drivers. All EFM32 parts are fully software compatible, so it is easy to port your projects between different parts as you see fit. Within each package type, there are also fully pin compatible options that allows you to switch easily to a higher memory part without changing your PCB layout. That concludes this training module on the EFM32. For more information, go to energymicro.com.